when I teach, one of the biggest, uh, I guess, complaints about that my students have about their own painting is they can't get loose. They're too tight. So basically, I really try and encourage them to stand up at an easel, arm's length, use as big a brush as possible to paint with, and that automatically your paintings will loosen up quite a bit. This is a dream come true. Um, it's a pipe dream. I came, I just remember being a senior and graduating with my BS in art education and saying to myself, there's no way I want to teach art. direction a little bit. And the fun thing about watercolor, I mean I've done oil I, and I love oil. They each have their own kind of unique possibilities. But there are things that you can do with watercolor that you cannot do with oil and this is one of them. I left teaching about 11 years ago, I left Keene High, and it was like walking off a cliff. And right now I'm just thinking of a map. You know, where are those places going to be? I started out in watercolor, uh, I moved into oils. I got into a niche with equine art um, over in Saratoga and down in Connecticut. This is still a little wet, which is okay. What I wanted to find was a real challenge with watercolor, and that was when I really got into this air and light series. Like, where are the centers of those flowers? trying to find in a landscape and in a painting, where is the place, where is that place, where is that energy where, your light, where the light and the air come together. Now, and once this dries, you can go back and pour even more so you can get some darks that are going to start to bring your shapes out. I know a lot about the land around me. I ride my horse all the time in these woods. So I have a constant barrage of, of ideas. I'm part of a group right now, um, we call ourselves the FAST 25 because it's, it's Fall Foliage um, Art Studio Tour and there are 25 of us on this tour. And it's, it's going to be held on Columbus Day weekend. 